Hello and welcome back to this channel. So in today's tutorial, we're going to learn some lettering in Fresco. So it's actually two step process to create something 3D like this. So the first part is going to be about creating our own color swatch using the multicolor eyedropper tool. And the next one is going to be about arranging this lettering so that we can add some shadows and create a 3D effect. So let's just get started. I'm going to go into custom size. I'll choose inches. And since this lettering looks really nice if the brush size is set to a little bit higher i'm going to choose a 10 inches into maybe about seven inches of artboard landscape mode and i'm going to set this to 300 and i'll click on create document so first let's start off by making the swatches that is you just go ahead and click on the shape tool click again go to basic shapes and click on circle so we definitely want a circle for this so this circle size could be anything. It really doesn't matter. So once you're done, go to your color palette. And if you want to use the same colors as mine, make sure you go ahead and check out the link in the description box below to download the color palette. I'm going to take some yellow. I think that should be fine. Click on fill and let's do a vector fill. Once you're done, click on your brush and it should be done. Now let's click on a new layer. Go to your vector brushes and in here, I'll choose the basic taper and I've set this to about 47 ish. And the main thing about basic taper brush is if you don't put pressure, it's going to create these thin lines. And if you put pressure, it'll make this thick and thin lines. We're going to use that technique to create some stripes on this one. I'll take some blue and draw something like this. And some pink, like that, maybe like that, and some red, like that, maybe here. And I'm just trying to fill in the space here right now. Okay, once you're happy with how your design looks, go ahead and click on Clipping Mask. So what this does is it removes all the excess things around the circle and that's exactly what we want. Now let's click on a new layer and we need to add some shadows to this. So go to your pixel brushes, go to basic and soft round opacity. So in here, I've set it to around 84 and uh, the flow is set to about 55. And if you still don't get the exact same effect, just go ahead and make sure you click here and click on this reset button to make sure it goes back to its original status. And let's take this and choose black. And I'm going to add some highlights here. Oops. Let's increase this a little bit, 117, I guess, and add something like that. And make sure you go ahead and click on clipping mask. And let's go ahead and choose white add some white over here so now we have this nice 3d kind of effect and now we're going to use this as our color swatch so let's go ahead and click on this eyedropper tool and make sure you place it somewhere here and click on this second option which is like the multicolor eyedropper tool and reduce the size using your two fingers so that it fits nicely inside the circle you can adjust it using this as well once you're done click on your swatches and click on plus Go back to your brushes and now you don't need this. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on select multiple and choose all three of this and click on this folder and click on this I button to remove it from the view. Now click on a new layer. It's time to start lettering. But before that, we have to establish our base lettering. So I'm just going to go ahead to color swatches, click on black and go to hard round. Adjust this size however you want and write the word that you want to write. And you can go here and reduce the opacity. Okay, so now we have to figure out where we're going to go ahead and overlap the alphabets or where it's going to create some shadows. So let me go ahead and choose some bright color just so it's easy for you guys. So once we bring in C, I want the A to overlap C. I'm going to mark something here and this comes like this and i want this one to overlap this so i'm going to mark something here and this comes here and this will overlap this one so i'm going to mark something here and you get the idea i'm 
Okay, if it's confusing, don't worry. It'll be pretty clear when you start actually writing these things. So let's go to a new layer and choose the swatch that you just created and make sure you're always on your hard round and your size is set to 34. You can increase it to anything you want, 40s or something. And just check how it looks. It's too thin right now. So I'm going to increase it to maybe 64. It's still small. Okay, this looks much better. You can actually make it thicker. Okay, this is perfect. This is something that I like. And one thing you should know, if your brush seems very blurry, that's because your DPI is set to really low. Make sure your artboard is set to at least 300 PPI so that uh, the brush does not seem that blurry. Okay, so let's start lettering. So you just follow this line and stop where you see the red line. That's really important. So go to the next layer. And I'm going to stop here. Go to the next layer. Stop here. Go to the next layer. I'm going to bring it and stop it here. Because, you know, we have another thing coming up. So click on next layer. Click on next layer. Next layer. Hold on a second. I want to make sure it overlaps this. Stop here. Stop there. Stop here. Stop here. Stop here. And then continue. And then you have all these things ready. And as you can see, it's not 3D yet, right? And now you should have understood why I marked those red things so that it gives a stop to what we are doing and then we can actually add shadows. Now it's time to add shadows. Let's go to the first one and click on a new layer and click on clipping mask. We'll go back to black color and we'll go back to a soft round opacity for this. And uh, the brush size is set at 117. We'll check it out. So you just go here and add some shadow to where you think the overlapping happens. I'm going to increase the size a little bit add a bit of shadow here. I want to add a bit of shadow here to this edge as well so that it kind of feels like, oh, there is a shadow thing happening here. Let's go to the next layer, click on a new layer, clipping mask again. And in here, you're going to add some shadow over here. And then this doesn't work because it's on a different layer. So go to this layer now, click on new layer, clipping mask. I'm going to add a bit of shadow here, as you can see. And let's do the same thing to the next one. And that's adding a shadow here. In here, it's going to be here. And this one, it's going to be here. Let's go to the next one, that is the D. And as you can see, it's going to be a bit here. And maybe a bit over here as well. We can go to the next one and Next one, it's over here. And the next one, it's over here. The Y goes all the way and it's basically over here. And I should make it as a clipping mask, otherwise it doesn't look good. Okay, so that's it. We have added all our shadows to where we want to add. And now it's time to add some highlights. Yes, you need to do that as well. Go to your white color and um, you could actually use pretty basic, simple thing to do that. So let me go ahead and start with the first C. So we are in the same soft round opacity. We're going to add a bit of shadow here and you can always reduce this like that. And let's go to the next clipping mask. Add a bit here. And you're going to do that for everything. You don't need on anything that is behind. And you don't need anything on this as well. Okay, so your whites are done as well. All it's left to do is to add a background. So I'm just going to go ahead and choose a layer, the bottommost layer, click on a new layer. And I want to choose a brush under pixel brushes. If you go into dry media, you'll see something called as hard pastel. And I will choose some dark color, which is like bluish tinge. And then I'm going to increase the size and not so much. Yeah, 
and add some texture here. You can actually use a fill tool and fill it out as well, but I like a little bit of texture here and there. Once you're done, click on a new layer and we're going to go ahead and choose some light blue or pink is also okay. And just draw it lightly so that there's a lot of texture coming through. Now let's click on levels and click on multiply. And it kind of creates its own texture. I don't know if you can see it from here uh, on the screen, but it has this beautiful texture. Uh, you can actually undo that, click on new layer. And I think I like the pink one better. I can just add some pinks here and there. Add a bit color pop and then click on multiply. The opacity. Okay, I don't know if you can see the texture right now, which is coming through, but it has got this really nice texture, which is like amazing, by the way. You can add more darker things here, and I don't think you can see it on the screen, but yeah. So it adds a bit of a nice texture to the whole artwork. You can then go ahead and uh, Click on the hot pastel and I'm going to click on the highest setting possible and add a new layer maybe and choose completely black and add a bit of texture here like that. Oops. Okay. Here and there to make it a bit grainy and stuff like that. Okay, so once you're ready with everything, you can just export it. You can see it's too bright right now here. So you don't have to do it that bright, actually. Just make sure that it's a bit lighter. If you feel like, oh my God, that's too much, you can always go into your smudge tool here and click on um, soft round opacity if you want to. And what is this? This is the A. You can just blur it out a little bit everywhere if you want. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this tutorial and I hope you liked it. And uh, yeah, it's so easy to actually create this 3D lettering uh, using Adobe Fresco. Okay, so this is the one that I created previously. So the only difference is that I use like a thicker bands of color. Let me just uncheck that to show you how it looks like. Okay, so my original, oops. So my original design looked something like this and I had used thicker bands of colors. That's why you have these thicker bands of colors here as well. So yeah, you could actually create something like this. And once you're done, you can always export it and use it in your artwork. So that brings us to the end of this tutorial and I hope you liked it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and make sure you click on that subscribe button and the notification bell to get notified every time I post a new video. Okay, I guess I'll see you in the next video then. Bye-bye.